Hi, in this video we're going to look at graphing level curves for a function of two variables. So first of all we want to be sure that we're clear what a level curve is. Uh, so for a function of x and y, a level curve is the set of all x, y such that the function output, so f of x, y, is equal to a constant, often we use c. So we're interested here in specific c values and the set of all x, y that give us those specific c values for the constant. So there are a couple of important things here to notice when you think about uh, level curves. One of them is that a level curve is really just x, y. We will look at level surfaces for functions of three variables, but when we talk about level curves, we're really talking about functions of two variables, and so we've got x, y, and so we might choose to graph that in two dimensions, in R2. Uh, and then the other important thing to notice here in this definition is that we're interested here in when the outputs are a constant. So this C value needs to be in the range of the function. And uh, so if I have a C value in the range, then what I'm looking at on my level curves is those X, Y values in the domain of the function that give us that specific output. Okay, so this is the same function that we looked at in the previous example. So we've already talked about the domain and range of this function. And so I'm gonna just kind of start with some range values. We talked about that the range of this function is the interval zero to two. So that gives us, you know, just kind of a, a small range of values to have to think about for this nice first example for output values. So I'm just gonna choose some convenient constant output values that are in this range here. So the easiest three to choose would be, I'm gonna make a little chart here to organize my work, C equals zero, C equals one, and C equals two. And what I want to think about here is what the level curve is uh, for each of those. We will look at some of these on a the computer at the end of this video, and so we'll let a computer graph a whole bunch of them for a whole bunch of different constant output values. But the idea here is that I've just chosen some constant output values that are in the range of the function. So I chose those. Um, the textbook sometimes might tell you some specific output values to use. Uh, when we look at the graph, we'll talk a little bit about when you make different choices, what you might be seeing when you look at those level curves. All right, and then the level curve that I want to look at, I'm going to just do this first one here, would be when my output of the function, so that's my f of x, y, is equal to that specific constant value. So I'm just going to put in this constant for my output, and then I'm going to think about what the x, y uh, values are. Okay, so for this one, I'll probably square both sides and then maybe do a little bit of rearranging here. So if I square both sides of this, I'll get 0 equals 4 minus x squared minus 4y squared. And then we should recognize that. That's the ellipse that we had for the boundary of our domain. Uh, for this function in the last video. So if I rearrange that a little bit, uh, I could write that as x squared over 4 plus y squared over 1 equals 1, just rearranging that algebraically. All right, I'm going to do this next one in a different color here. So 1 equals uh, my function, so I put 1 in for the output value. And what I'm interested in are the x, y values that give us this. So I'm going to do a little rearranging here as well. I'm going to square both sides and rearrange the terms. So when I do this one, uh, when I add the x squared and 4y squared to the other side, I might also want to subtract 1. So I would have x squared plus 4y squared equals 3. Uh, because I have these two constant terms now. And so this is also an ellipse, but the dimensions of this one are a little harder to think about than the previous one. Uh, I'm going to divide through by 3, so we might write x squared over 3. And then for this next term, I might write 4y squared over 3, but in order to think about the graph, I'm actually going to write that as y squared over 3 fourths. 
So that's kind of a strange way to write that, but that'll help us think about that ellipse and how far up and down we will go from the center of that ellipse. All right, and then I'm going to do one more, and then we'll draw these graphs. So uh, when our output is 2, I'll get 2 equals this square root. And when I square both sides here, I'll have 4 equals 4 minus x squared minus 4y squared. And when I rearrange terms for that, I'll get x squared plus 4y squared equals 0, which is a degenerate ellipse. And this one's just the origin is the only thing I get for that. Okay, so now I have all these. I'm going to go ahead and graph them in R2. So I'm in my xy coordinate system. And I'm going to graph them using the same colors uh, that I worked out the equations in just so we can identify those a little bit. All right, so I'm going to start with the first one I did, the c equals 0. So that is an ellipse centered at the origin, and we're going to go left and right two units and up and down one unit. So we have this ellipse. And then our next curve here that we did is this next ellipse. Uh, this one's a little bit harder to think about from the center in the left and right direction, I'm going to go plus or minus square root of 3 units, which is approximately plus or minus 1.7. And then in the y direction, I'm going to go plus or minus square root of 3 fourths, which is approximately plus or minus 0.9 if I round to one decimal point. So from the center, I'm going to go plus or minus about 1.7 left and right and plus or minus 0.9 up and down. And so I have another ellipse uh, a little bit farther apart on the sides than it is at the top and bottom of that ellipse from our previous ellipse. And then the last one uh, that I did when we had c equals 2, we got just the point at the origin. So I'm going to put that here. Uh, I've used some colors to identify which one's which, but generally if you don't use colors, or maybe even if you do use colors, uh, you would also label what the constant output was for each of the level curves. So c equals 0, c equals 1, and then c equals 2. So one of the things that we want to think about is what these level curves tell us about the graph of the surface. We already graphed this surface, so I'm going to do just a little sketch over here of our three-dimensional surface here. So we had a half ellipsoid, just the top half of the ellipsoid, and I just kind of did a little rough sketch of that ellipsoid there that we did in the last video. And so I just want to kind of pay attention to what these level curves represent. So when we had c equals 0 for our level curve, that was where the outputs are 0. And on our xyz coordinate axes, our outputs are on the z axis. So when we look at the level curve for c equals 0, that's going to correspond to the level on the surface where z is equal to 0. So that's this cross section down here in the xy plane. And then the c equals 1 level curve, the next one we'll look at here would be where z equals 1. So if I go up one unit on my surface and think about slicing that surface up at that level of z equals 1, I get this next level curve right there. So that's where I'd have z equals 1 or c equals 1 if we're thinking about it in terms of a constant. And then the c equals 2, that's just the point at the origin, that's that point at the top of our ellipsoid where the z value was 2, and that's the only point on this ellipsoid where the output of the function is 2. And so one of the things I want you to pay attention to is in the graph of the level curves, where those level curves are really close to each other on the sides, if you think about the three-dimensional surface, it's very steep right there. So really close together level curves indicate a very steep surface. Uh, so that should make you start to think a little bit about rates of change and slopes, which have to do with derivatives. So this idea about the level curves being close together are going to tell us where the function is steep and tell us something about derivatives. All right, so I've graphed our surface here in Calcplot 3D, and you might notice how the square root is uh, written there. So I type SQRT parentheses for square root. And so what we see here is the graph of that 3D surface. Uh, this 3D surface here, it looks kind of jagged on the sides where the surface is really steep. Calcplot 3D sometimes has a difficult time 
So, so I changed the number of grid lines to 50 and it plotted a lot more points and so it looks a little bit better on the very steep sides. Uh, but the other thing I want to point out here about this is if you look right next to where I have the X and Y uh, intervals for my function, I have a little graph that looks like a graph of level curves. So I'm going to click that and this uh, dialog box comes up and so it asks me where do I want my first level value, what step size do I want, and how many do I want. So I want mine to go from 0 to 2, so I'm going to change the first level value to be at 0. And then uh, if I go from 0 and I go up by point twos, I will get to 2 at 11 levels. So that's what this means. I've got my first level value at 0, step size of 0 0.2, so it's going to increase by 0.2s. When I did it, I started at 0 and increased by 1 unit on my step size for my constant outputs. And I only plotted 3, but we're going to let the computer plot 11 of them here. So I'm going to click Create Plot, and I see a graph of level curves. And then if I click on the level curves, then I get this other screen which is really awesome. So I have the graph of the level curves on the left side. Notice all the labels there so I can see what the constant outputs are for each of those. And then you can also see on the 3D surface where those level curves correspond to on the 3D surface. You can also pick a point. If I click a point here I can put a point on my surface and drag it around on the graph of the level curves and then it's also on the graph of the surface and so I can see that. We'll look at these actually quite a bit when we look at several different things throughout this chapter. So uh, just remember the little picture of the level curves can help you create a nice uh, computer image of the level curves but then you got to click on it one more time to see the level curves and the 3D surface together.